bad because straight is the gate and narrow is the way. Everybody say narrow is narrow the way. Is the narrow way. is the way. That's right. Amen. Narrow is the way which leadeth uh, unto life. Amen. Unto life. And few there be that find it. Narrow is the way that leads to life. Broad is the way that leads to destruction. Broad leads to destruction, to damnation, to sin, to hurt, to harm, to ruin. But 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 narrow is the way that leads to life. But, but sadly, sadly, few there be. Uh, that find it. You can be seated today in the presence of the Lord. Amen. I just reached down to get a bottle of water and it was empty. And I suppose that was probably me from Sunday school. What do you think? Uh, Amen. Uh, here in Matthew chapter number 7, Jesus talks about the two different paths uh, that people are on. Uh, now, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know this, that regardless of, of, of people's uh, background, regardless of their financial status, regardless of the race, their ethnicity, what country they live in, there are only two paths that people yeah, are on. Right. There's the broad way, which leads to, to destruction, and then there's the narrow way, which leads to eternal life and peace yeah. with God. And I'm glad that Jesus has taken me off the broad way yes, and put me on the narrow way, which leads to life. Amen. And, amen. and so regardless of who people are, regardless of where they live, regardless of what their culture is like, there's absolutely only two paths that people are on. Uh, on the broad way, the Bible tells us in verse number 13, Jesus speaking, he says that it's a pleasurable way, and it's so pleasurable that many people are on it. Uh, so uh, you, you, there's a lot to do on the broad road. Uh, you can get drunk on the broad road. You can smoke weed on the broad road. You can uh, get sell uh, your, your, your wife <laughs> and, uh, and, and trade her in for a new model on the, on the broad road, but on the straight and narrow way, God says, be faithful to your spouse, right? Amen. And so, amen. That was a bad example, praise the Lord. Oh, yes, but there's a lot to do on the broad road. Amen. Uh, but ladies and gentlemen, the Bible would tell us here that there's another way, and unfortunately and sadly, there's only few people on this way, and that is the way that leads uh, to life. Amen. Now, the Bible reads Jesus speaking. Jesus is the one who said it. And I think it's interesting that we must know, we must take note of it, that Jesus himself has defined the Christian way as a narrow way. Now, we didn't have to be raised in 2020, and we didn't have to look around and let all the educated people tell us that we're so narrow-minded and bigoted. Jesus had already told us 2,000 years ago that the Christian way was a narrow way. It's narrow. Amen. It's, a, it's narrow. There's not a lot of room on it. There's not a lot of room for compromise on it. There's not a lot of Excuse me. Room for doing it your own way on it. You can't. You can't go on the narrow road and road and and make up your own rules. But you got to follow the rules of God on the narrow road. Hallelujah! Jesus said this thing is going to end up being a narrow way. Amen. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I feel some of that pressure tonight because not necessarily preaching to a crowd like this. Because when you preach to a crowd like this, everybody in here believes the Bible. Everybody in here believes yeah, in yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Everybody in here accepts the finality of scripture and so it's not that big of a deal but when you stand before a group of people and among those group of people all sorts of different people from all sorts of different walks of life yeah. from all sorts of different ways and then you stand up before them and you tell them something like Jesus is the way the truth the life no man comes to the father but by me now all of a sudden you begin to feel the narrowness of that message because that message excludes the Muslim, that message excludes uh, the religious Christian, that, that message excludes the Jewish person who has not believed in Jesus. There's only one way to God, there's only one way to find God, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ, and that is a very narrow message. And Jesus told us it was uh, in verse number 14, so he said, this thing is going to be narrow, and I want to tell you it's narrow because there's only one Savior. It's narrow because there's only one Savior. Allah cannot save you. Buddha cannot save you. The Catholic priest cannot save you. You and Hail Marys cannot save you. Brother Jason cannot save you. But if you ever intend to get saved, if you've ever been saved, it's because Jesus the Christ has come to where you are and saved you and redeemed you and drew you unto himself. He is the only Savior.
future. Now as time goes on, if the society continues to go worse and worse and worse into sin and destruction and rebellion, that message will get more narrow as the days go on. Amen. But I tell you, we must stand up for it. We must stand up to it. And we must declare the truth of Scripture that Jesus said He's not a Savior. He's not a Messiah. He's not a way to, a way to God. He is the one true way to the Father is through the Son of the living God named Jesus. And so this way is narrow because there is only one Savior. Now on top of that, this way is narrow because there is only one way to this one Savior. And I want you to hear him real well on that. This way is narrow because there is one Savior, but this way is also narrow because there is only one way to this one Savior. You know what that way is? We are saved by grace through faith and that not of ourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So there is only one way and that way is the way called faith. Faith in Jesus, faith in the cross, faith in God, faith in what He has done, faith in what God has accomplished for us. And so I cannot work my way to heaven. I can't time my way to heaven. I can't attend my church my way to heaven. I can't pray my way to heaven. I've got to look to Jesus. And if Jesus doesn't get me to heaven, absolutely nothing will get me there. Hallelujah. So there's only one Savior and there's only one way to this one Savior. If you believe it, say amen. So now if I say to the, to the culture Jesus is the way, it becomes a narrow message. And if I say to the religious culture, yes, Jesus is the way, but there's also only one way to this one Jesus, and water baptism is not it, and speaking in tongues is not it, and dressing a certain way is not it, and looking a certain way is not it, but that one way is faith in the Son of God who loved me and died for me and gave himself for me. Now all of a sudden the the way becomes even more narrow as the days go on. Yes, go on. Amen. Amen. So I want to say this. The way is narrow, but it is not difficult. Yes, the way is narrow, but it is not difficult. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Why is it not difficult? Well, first of all, it's not difficult because it is God who paid for this salvation. Don't you think? Yeah. We'll point into Acts chapter number 20, verse number 28. The Bible reads and tells us that Jesus has purchased the church with his own blood. And so in other words, what am I trying to tell you? I'm trying to tell you Jesus is the one who paid for this way. So it may be narrow, but it's not difficult because I didn't have to pay for it. Brother Rick, I didn't have to get up early early this morning and stand in a corner and say, Jesus, I'm going to stand here so long that eventually you'll wash away my sins. No, he has purchased the church with his own blood. He has paid for it. He has bought it. He has made a way for it. He has redeemed it. And so it's, it's narrow, yes, but it's not difficult. Hallelujah. You know what all you got to do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Call upon his name. Turn to him and he will save save you. So it may be narrow but it's not a difficult amen. Why? Because I don't have to earn it. I don't have to strive for it. I don't have to give a certain amount of money to get it. I don't have to be a certain kind of person to receive it. But I can be red, yellow, black and white and Jesus has purchased it. Jesus has made a way. Jesus has shed his blood. Jesus has redeemed the people. Jesus has paid for our salvation. And it's about time that we quit trying to earn it and start enjoying it and say, thank you, Jesus, that you have saved me, that you have redeemed me, that you have cleansed me, and that you have made a way. Listen, if you think you're going to get to heaven by your church attendance, you're fooling yourself. God will cast you and your church attendance to hell. There's only one way, and it's not a difficult way, but it's a narrow way, and that way is Jesus. Hallelujah. He has why do I bring this narrow, difficult thing up? Because these new versions of the Bible are taking the word narrow out yeah, come on. and replacing it with the word 
difficult. Mm -hmm. And, on, and I've discovered in my life that it is a narrow way, Brother Rick. But it's not difficult. No, thank you, my Jesus. I don't have to earn it. No. Come on, I don't have to pay for it. Right. I don't have to shed my blood to get it. Right. Amen. I don't have to speak in tongues for four years to receive yeah, eternal life. Right. I don't have to look a certain way in order to merit God's yeah. favor. But God says, come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Well, God, I think I'll go through my home, through Allah. Uh, no, no, no. It's narrow. But all you can do, if you come through Jesus, you'll find it narrow, but you won't find it difficult. Hallelujah. Yeah. I remember I was eight and a half years old, Brother Rick, and I looked at my dad one day, and I said, am I going to heaven when I I die. And he said, I don't know. And I said, well, I'll tell you what, I feel the weight of sin on me. What do I got to do to be saved? And he said, you know what, this thing called salvation, it's narrow. There's not 25 yeah. different saviors, yeah. but it's not difficult. Yeah. Call on his name. Hallelujah. Yeah. And he'll save yeah. you. And, yeah. and I'll tell you what, yeah. I can't believe it wasn't too many years ago when we were in the back of the church and you wanted to get saved. And I said, you, it's narrow, yes, but it's it's not difficult. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. All you gotta do, you gotta do is call on his name Hallelujah. and he'll save you yes. from your sins. Oh, Jesus. It's not difficult because oh, God yes. is the one who has paid for it. Yeah. It would be difficult if I had to pay for it. Right. Wouldn't it be difficult if you had to wake up every day and, 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 and measure up? Wouldn't it be difficult if you had to wake up every day and work your way to heaven? Wouldn't it be difficult if God said the only way you're going to get to heaven is to pray for three and a half hours a day? Brother Rick, I'd start after, I guess I'd have to quit my job. And i have to quit doing the dishes. And i have to quit mowing the lawn. And i have to quit going here and going there. And I tell you what, if I had to get up as Kendra Lee every day for 70 years to pray for three and a half hours a day to earn my salvation, I'd say that's difficult. But if Jesus paid for it, if Jesus bought it, if Jesus did it, if Jesus prayer secures it, then I say, man, yeah, it may be a little bit narrow, but it's not difficult. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. It's not difficult because God paid for it. It's not difficult because it is God who draws people yes. to himself. Amen. According to John chapter number 6 and verse number 44, the Bible tells us Jesus said, No man can come to me except the Father which sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last days. I remember I walked into a building one day, and the lady asked me, she said, What's wrong with you? And I said, Man, I got saved. And she said, Oh, you mean you found God? And I said, No, I didn't find God because God wasn't lost. I was. I didn't find God because I didn't heed it need to be found. He knew where he was. He knew who he was. But I didn't know where I was, Brother Rick. I didn't know where I was going. I didn't know where I was at. And I didn't know how to get out. Hallelujah. Yeah. And you know what I've discovered, Kendrilly? God, it is God who saves. It is God who draws. Yeah, it God. is God who redeems. Yeah. It is God who purchases. Somebody said, you sound like you're a one saved, always saved Baptist. Will you call me what you want to call me? But when I stand before God, I'm going to look at him and say, it's all you and not me. I do where lost I was. You didn't need to be found. I did. Your blood has shed, which has, was shed for me to wash my sins away. And if you don't give me your grace, then I'll die and go to hell. But I believe your grace is sufficient for me. Oh, yes. I know, Brother Rick, it's narrow. But it ain't difficult. It ain't difficult. Amen. What do you got to do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. So what does God do? God has paid for his church. So I say amen. amen. God has paid for our salvation. God draws us to himself. You know the reason why you're here tonight? Because God drew you to himself. Yes, Jesus. Amen. 
Do you know the reason why you're still saved? Because God keeps drawing you to himself. Do you know the reason why you haven't gotten away yet? It's not because you're so good of a Pentecostal that you haven't gotten away yet. Yes, brother, uh, brother Tim, this way is narrow, but I've discovered it's Jesus who does the saving. So I've never found it to be difficult. I've never found it to be hard. I, I find the way of a sinful man to be hard. I remember when I was addicted to stuff I couldn't be free of. That was difficult. I remember when I was addicted to ways I couldn't get out of. That was hard. I remember when they put me in handcuffs. That was difficult. I remember when I cried myself to sleep. That was hard. But I tell you what, there's not been a day since Jesus found me that I've been back in handcuffs. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the yes, it's narrow, brother. But it ain't difficult. It ain't difficult. All you gotta do is believe. Yes, sir. And so he saves his church. Amen. He redeems his church. He draws his church. He draws his oh, church. Lord, Brother Charlie, that? I remember. I remember years ago. I don't know how long ago it's been now, but I'll tell you what, it was a few years ago anyway. When we were maybe two. When we were outside there in that back in that back area. And me, you, you and I, we ran that little post hole digger with a gas motor, and you worked me till the, till I was about blue in the face and ready to fall over. And I thought to myself, when I when we first picked up that gas with that gas thing, I thought to myself, I'm gonna have to give Brother Charlie a break every one to one or two holes. I found out I was huffing and puffing and ready to blow the house down. And I said, Brother, you need a break. He said, No, no, quit being lazy, young man, and let's go dig another hole. Amen. That was difficult. Hallelujah. That was difficult. And I don't relish in doing that again. But I tell you what, Brother Charlie, it wasn't too long until I watched God draw you uh, to himself. And you know what? When we get to heaven, Brother Charlie, I'm going to take all my crowns and anything God gives me, and I'm going to throw it back down at the feet of Jesus and say, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive honor and glory and praise. It is all you and not me. Everything I touch, Jesus, I mess up, but everything you touch, you redeem. Yes, it's narrow, but think it's not difficult. Hallelujah. It went too long ago until I seemed like it was a fall day, Brother Charlie, the same God who saved me at the age of eight years old, and he saved you as well. And then it wasn't too long ago, we took you in an old horse trough and baptized you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Amen. What am I trying to say? Yes, it's narrow. But man, anybody can get in on this thing. It is not difficult. What about faith? See, Brother Jason, I got to believe, and that was difficult, was it? Was it difficult to believe? Didn't the Bible say, Romans chapter number 10, verse 17, uh, that uh, faith cometh by hearing, yeah. and hearing by the Word of God? Word of God. Yeah. Did the Bible say as we put that word of God out there or as you take up the word of God in your hands and begin to read, do you know what God does? He begins to deposit faith on the inside of you. He begins to say, yes, that's true. Jesus is the way. Yes, that's true. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Yes, that's true. There's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. Yes, that's true. There's only one way to God. Yes, it's true as you hear the word of God. And that's why, Brother Rick, I don't ever underestimate being in the house of God and hearing the word of God because I tell you what it takes time sometimes but that word will take root it takes time sometimes but that word will make a difference it takes time sometimes but God knows how to get a hold of a child who's only here because mom and dad make them be here and over time deposit that word in them and they don't even want to hear it and they don't even want to deal with it and they wish they were home I'm not talking about my kids I'm just talking about kids in general General, but all of a sudden that word gets down in their heart over yeah. time, over time, over time, and it works a work. And I found out that it is God who saves. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. God who saves. Thank you, Jesus. So it's God who paid for his church. Acts chapter 20, verse number 28. It's God who draws his people to himself. John chapter 6, verse 44. It sounds like really all I really need to do is cooperate with God. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. Like if I'm out, if I'm out, uh, you go, yo, if I'm out in a boat and it, and it starts to get a hole in the bottom of it and it goes under, 
And now I'm out there and a big old boat comes by. And they throw me out a life jacket and a preserver or a dude, a buoy or whatever they call them things. Brother Rick, I ain't shaving myself. I, I'm not saving myself. The guy in the boat's doing all the work. The guy in the boat's the one that threw it out. The guy in the boat's the one that made it possible. All I gotta do is cooperate. And I'm like that drowning man, and you're like that drowning man. And we're out there in the middle of an ocean of sin, in a, in a broad way, and yeah. drowning, and falling under, and full of sin and rebellion. And yes, we were lost, and yes, we weren't looking for God, but He threw out a life preserver, and all I had to do was cooperate. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. And I found that it wasn't very difficult. Amen. Come on. It was narrow. Yeah. You see, there's only one life preserver that they threw out to me. Yeah. Right. And it had a name on it called Jesus. Amen. That's narrow. Yeah. The all life preserver will, will, will fail you. Yeah. The, that, that Confucius life preserver will, will fail you. Right. That good works life preserver will fail you. Yeah. That speaking in tongues Pentecostal life preserver will fail you. Yeah. But I tell you what, there's a life preserver that'll never fail yeah. and never let down yeah. and never stumble. And it'll yeah. get you safely to the other yeah. side. And when you make it to heaven, you'll look at Jesus and say, Thou art worthy, man. I've yeah. missed this thing. Oh, As the pastor says, all of my eggs are in this one basket. Yes, sir. Yes. That's it. If Jesus can't save me, ain't nothing. I ain't even looking at nothing else. Amen. 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 Right. So it's God who draws. It's God who provides the word of God, which gives us faith. And then the Bible tells us that holy men of old spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. God, the Holy Ghost, the third person of the Trinity, moved upon the Bible writers to write the words of God. And then he moved upon people down throughout the centuries to keep them and to copy them and to translate them and brought them into our language in this generation. And now we read them and faith rises up on the inside of us. Brother Rick, so I can't even look at God and say, man, I tell you what I've contributed. I've contributed my faith because I'd have no faith outside of his word. I'd have no faith outside of his power. I'd have no faith outside of his spirit. It's the Bible said, faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So what I'm trying to do is tell you that if you're going to be saved, it's going to be God that does the saving yeah, and not you yourself. Yeah, yeah, God. God. Amen. So it's God that saves. That's right. It's God that draws. It's God that That's gives right. the word of God, which increases faith. And it's also God. And I didn't, I didn't really learn this until really, really, I guess, ever see it until this weekend. And then I saw it even greater when I was in the, in the when Saturday Bible study uh, that Sister Lois led. And it was a, she did a good job, sis, by the way. And it was, a good, it was a good Bible study. But if you will, go with me to 2 Timothy chapter 2, if you will. Amen. 2 Timothy chapter 2, and we'll look at this verse together. Verse 25, 2 Timothy chapter number 2. Well, I know what I contribute to my salvation. I contribute my repentance. That's it. Peter said on the day of Pentecost, repent and believe. And so I repent and be baptized. And so I contribute my repentance. Do you? 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 25, the Bible reads, In meekness instructing those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure will give them repentance. Man, if God, peradventure, if God by chance will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. And so it's God that saves. It's God that paid for your salvation. It's God that came down and was born of a virgin and shed his blood on the cross. It's God, Brother Gene, that has drawn you unto himself. It's God, Sister Bob, that has washed away our sins. It's God who has redeemed us. It's God who has given us faith. It's God, and it's not only that, it's God who has given us a repentance repentance in the heart if God will give them repentance. You see, sometimes I feel broken over my sin, and I feel broken over the state of my affairs, and I feel broken at the way I've been doing business, and I feel that repentance, and God forgive me, and God I sorrow unto repentance, and I don't want to disappoint you, and I don't want to fail you, I don't want to stand before you as a failure, God. I know, God, you've given me too much and been too good to me, and I sometimes get ready. Oh, I can rise up in that repentance and say, man, Look at me. I am a repenter. When the whole time, the only reason I'm anything is because God placed repentance in the heart. It is God who saves. That's right, It is God who saves. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. It is God who saves. All we do is cooperate. 
It is God who gives repentance. It is God who gives faith. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. It is God who draws. Jesus said, John 6, no man can come unto me except the Father which sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last days. And I want to say this to you. It is God who keeps us saved. Yes, it is God who keeps us saved. Yes. It is God who keeps us saved. Yes, amen, amen, amen. Am I saying that we couldn't uh, cast off our first love? Am I saying we couldn't cast off a faith? No, I'm not saying that at all. But I am saying, ladies and gentlemen, that the only reason I'm still preaching after 15 years is because this way has not been difficult. If it had been difficult, I'd have given it up. If it had been difficult, I'd have quit doing it. If it had been difficult, I'd have quit messing with it. But I'll tell you what, if God makes it so easy, that he draws me and God makes it so easy that he brings me to repentance and God makes it so easy that he has paid for it and not me myself and God makes it so easy that he as an anchor to my soul sister gay keeps me when nobody sees me and keeps me when nobody knows what I'm going through and keeps me when nobody knows what I'm feeling and keeps me when nobody knows what I'm feeling and keeps me when because he has kept me. Hallelujah. By his power. Amen. He is a keeping God. He is a keeping Amen. God. Come on. There's been many a times I'd have went the other direction. There's been many a times I'd have fallen out of church. Right. There's been many a hurts that came along this way. You don't think you get hurt passing a church. You, you, you need to try it for about a week. Yeah. I'll tell you what, this funny thing. I'm not going to talk about this. I'm not going to <laughs> It's a funny thing about pastoring in church, and I think it's uh, sort of true that hey, all you got to do is really try it for a little while, and you'll get the, you'll get the feel of it real quick. Oh yeah. Oh, it's right. a funny thing about pastoring in church. People think they can say whatever they want to you, but you better not say anything <laughs> back. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I tell you what, I've had them say mean things to me, bad things to me. And I'm not talking about anybody in this building. I'm just talking about things that if it meant, if it had not been for God who was the anchor of my soul, I'd have went home hurt and disgusted and busted yeah. and yeah. broken and, 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 and a tragedy. And I'd have wound up a shipwrecked man and a shipwrecked preacher and a shipwrecked believer. But every time by the rig, I ever thought about going into the tavern, there was something from the hand of God that said, come yeah. back here, boy. Every time I ever thought about giving up, there was something that said, go preach, boy. Every time I thought about saying, Jesus, the church is getting too low in numbers. We might as well close it down and give it back to the bank. There was something in me that said, you go ahead and preach. Hallelujah. Just keep on preaching. And there was a grace and a power and an authority. And I don't care what they say. I have not kept myself. He has kept me. Oh, yes. He has kept me. He loves us. He has kept me. The Bible said in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 5, you can look it up when you get home or now, whatever you want to do. But the Bible said, who are kept by the power of God. He keeps us by his power. He acts as an anchor to the soul. Amen. And I'm telling you, even people who are backslidden to some degree the other night, there's still an anchor on their soul. Yeah, there is. Absolutely. There's still an anchor getting a hold of them. There's, there's still something on the inside yes, of them that says, quit yeah. running. There's still something on the inside of them that says, come back. There's still something on the other side of them that says, keep on going. Keep on serving. Don't you remember what it was like when you was on fire with, for God? Don't you remember what it was like when you read the Bible? Don't you remember what it was like when you stood behind the pulpit and preached the gospel? There's something in them that won't let them get away. You know what that something is? The anchor of our soul. Brother Tim, if I had to keep myself, that'd be pretty difficult. But if he keeps me, yes. Amen. Oh, it made me narrow. Yeah. Yeah. There's only one life preserver. Yeah. Yeah. There's only one way to the one life preserver. Yeah. Faith. That's right, sir. It made me narrow. Uh -huh. But he made it pretty, pretty easy for me. Yes, oh, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Am I saying I've never had any troubles? No, I mean, I've had plenty of them. Amen. Am I saying I've never thought about quitting? No, I have. Now, I don't know if I've ever thought about quitting on God, but I've thought about quitting on preaching. I can tell you that. Yeah. Amen. Somebody said, you, you know them preachers. They told me the other day, said, you know them preachers are rich. I said, not this one. <laughs> <laughs> not this one. Mm. <laughs> Spiritually rich. Amen. Yeah, that's right. And so it's God who keeps me. Yes, sir. It's God who gives me repentance. It's God who drew me unto himself. 
It's God who redeemed me and paid for me. And uh, it's God who lives in me. Oh, my Jesus. Who lives in me. Who lives in me. I mean, this is like the only, the Christianity is the only religion that I've ever seen on the face of the planet whereby a man's God, God offered to come live on the inside of him and live out the Christian life through him by cooperation with the God who's on the inside of him. I mean, Allah doesn't say, I'll come to live on the inside of you and live my life through you and give me, you give you my power uh, to do that. Buddha doesn't do that. But I'll tell you what Jesus said, if you believe in me, I'll come make my home with you and I'll suck with you and he and you with me and I'll live on the inside of you and if any man be in Christ he's a new creation all things are passed away and behold all things are become new and he gives me joy unspeakable and full of glory I didn't say I'm always happy I didn't say I always have everything I want but brother Rick when I really think about the goodness of Jesus sister Sue there's a joy that rises up on the inside of me and I'm about to dance in my step oh hallelujah and it makes me want to jump and shout and it makes me want to dance and say thank you Jesus and I say well the longer I'm in this thing the more I realize man it may be narrow but it ain't difficult oh my God thank you Lord Jesus God has made it so simple for us God I'm going to I'm going to go find you I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to stir up all my wisdom and understanding and mind, and I'm going to go find you. Look, man, you'll wander in circles like the children of Israel in the wilderness until you die looking for God because you'll never find him. But if you let God look for you, yeah. if you let God draw you, if you let God save you, if you let God keep you, if you let God be the anchor to your soul, when you stand before God at the end of your days, you'll say, God, I may have been a big, a big savior, but you're a big sinner, but you were even a bigger savior. Hallelujah. And there was no sin that I ever committed that your grace wasn't sufficient enough to wash away. Amen. To wash away. To wash away. So I read to you now. I read to you from the New English translation. Here's what it says. Verse 14, Matthew 7. Somebody says, Brick, you're about to have a heart attack, aren't you? Uh-huh. I don't read it so that we can all adopt it. I read it so you know what it says. That's good. Amen. It says, Matthew 7, 14, how, how, how narrow is the gate and difficult the way that leads to life. Boy. Now that's a that's foreign message to me, folks. Yes, sir. I haven't found this thing difficult. Right. I found God is the one who saves. I found it narrow, but not difficult. Yeah, right. Amen. In fact, the only thing difficult about this journey is dealing with Jason. <laughs> because Jesus has been a beautiful, beautiful Savior oh, yes, amen. to me. Amen. amen. So Matthew chapter 7, verse 14, the Bible reads, Straight is the gate. Straight is the gate, and narrow, narrow, narrow is the way. I say that with authority. I say that with truth. It is narrow. Amen. Yes. But man, I've not found it to be difficult. Yes, sir. I was in a bookstore one time, and a gentleman was standing next to me. He was buying a Bible. And so I started talking to him, and he said, he said, I'm going to buy this Bible for my daughter. He said, what, what are you buying a dog for your daughter for? He said, well, I, 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 I want her to get saved. I said, okay. I said, no. You know, there's some Bibles that have changed the message a tad bit. And we don't want our, our children believing that the gospel is difficult. Right. We don't want them believing that it's hard to be saved. Right. Kendra, when you said, I want to get saved... Jesus saved you real easy. Yeah, that's right. Real simple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was real straightforward. Yeah. And in one moment's instant, and by calling upon him, he translated you from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. And he wrote your name down in heaven. Hallelujah. Yeah, and right. he sealed you with the spirit and the Holy Ghost of promise. And he washed away all the sins you had ever committed. Yeah. And it wasn't you didn't have to sit in a corner for, for four hours and say, God, I'm sorry, God, I'm sorry, God, I'm sorry. <laughs> Man, he just took it and he did it. And I'm so glad hallelujah that it may be narrow ladies and gentlemen but it's not it's not difficult 
Amen. Let's stand today in the house of the Lord. God bless you. Father, we love you. We thank you for the word of God. We thank you for truth, the Lord.